In this video, I will be teaching you how to set up a debugger in Visual Studio Code. Um, so I pulled up this website. It's just from the Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio website. Um, and it's in their Python debugging uh, section of their docs. So I just searched for um, set up Python debugging in Visual Studio Code. And this was like one of the first things that came up. But you'll see that Visual Studio Code has a native debugger that you can use while you run your files. And there's something called a launch.json file that will have configurations to say what you want to have happen when you run your debugger. So let's go ahead and look at this. So here's my checkpoint from week one. All right. Now let's say I wanted to see, um, you know, what this age input was or what this max heart rate was while my program was running. There's a couple of different ways that I could do that. I could actually print this out. Um, and do something like that and then I could see what this is at the time that it runs or what's a lot more effective um, is to just use a debugger. A debugger will allow me to stop my code at any point in the program. I can just click here kind of to the left of these these row numbers. I can just click on click over here and it will make a breakpoint and then when I actually execute my code if I have my debugger running then it will it'll stop that stop the code on that breakpoint. So if I open this in my terminal and I say pi 01 checkpoint, uh, I can enter my age and when you exercise your strength in your heart, you should, okay. So notice it didn't stop on this breakpoint. It's because I don't have a, I don't have my debugger running. So we can, we can do a couple things. I can click on debug right here and hit, and hit start debugging. Um, or I can click over here and I can see different settings that I have for my debugger. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is download the Code Runner extension. All right, this is fantastic for any one of these languages. It's really nice. Um, so go ahead and install this first. And then all you're gonna to have to do, let me just head back to our code here. Once this is installed, you'll see this button uninstall. Um, you can come back to your code and you want to start debugging eventually, but first you wanna open the configurations. So this is the launch.json file I was showing you in the in the docs page that I had pulled up a moment ago. Um, and you can have multiple configurations here. So if I went to debug, um, so like if I clicked over here, you can see I have these two different options. I have this Python current file integrated terminal and my other one GDP launch CS124. Um, you know, so this was for like a, a, a C++ thing that I had. Um, but this is what we're going to want to use for Python. So if you go back to this page, if you scroll down a little ways, you can see the set configuration options. When you first create launch.json, there are two standard configurations that run the active file in the editor. So what that means is when I run this, um, wherever I start my debugger, just whatever file I have open right here, that is what will get executed for my debugger to run. And that's, that's what we generally want. Um, so you can see it, it named Python current file. You can technically name it anything you want. Um, type Python request launch program. This just says whatever file you have open and then where it's actually going to log stuff will be <clears throat> in the integrated terminal. All right, so I would just copy this guy and then you can come over here and what yours will probably look like is just like that. You'll just paste it um, and this will be your launch.json file. Okay, so once that is there, you can see I have this option over here, Python current file, integrated terminal, um, and then I can come over here. Now there's a couple different ways that I can do this. If I have that code runner installed, all I have to do is just hit F5. It's gonna do a couple of things. Notice it popped up this little window right here. It opened up this down here. This orange thing down here is on. Um, all this debugging stuff is showing up over here. It says Python current, file integrated terminal auto attaches on so I could type in an age and look at that we have these local variables that shows age is 55 max heart heart rate is 165 because these are the things that have already been declared I could hover over these and see what they are you can see input is a built-in function float okay I can hover over any one of these things I can hover over max heart rate here I can highlight this to see what that will produce Okay, um, if I hit F10, it'll go down to my next step. Okay, so it says min range is gonna be 107, 
max range is going to be 140 and then it'll print if i if at any point i want to let it go i can just hit f5 and that'll continue um f10 will step over so it'll just go to like the next step in the program and those are the two that i really use a lot i mean there are several others here um but i'm just going to go ahead and hit f5 to be like yep i'm done and you can see I was able to debug this. Okay, I, I could put a breakpoint in, see what every value was while I was running it. Now with a simple program like this, <clears throat> it doesn't really, you know, a debugger might help with something like this, but also um, you, you could easily do just like a simple print statement or something to see everything that we just saw. When you get into more complex programs that deals that deal with lists and tuples and dictionaries and things like that, it can be really helpful to have those things just printed up right here um, and you'd be able to like, just click on them and walk through them while you're running your program. It's really nice. Um, so again, just a little bit of review. If I want to debug, I can just hit start debugging. There is a shortcut. I can just hit F5. Uh, as long as you have this configuration in your launch.json file, then it will show up right here as a way that you can debug. If this is your only thing, then anytime you hit F5, it'll just default to that. Um, and it'll just debug whatever file you currently have up. So if I have this up and I just hit F5, if F5, it'll go ahead and run this program, and um, it'll stop that on whatever breakpoint I I had it stop on. Okay, um, so I hope that this is helpful in getting you started. I will be sure to include uh, this code and this link. Uh, you can see if you look through here, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, but for the purposes of this class, that's really all I'm probably going to have you guys worry about is just having that. Um, that launch.json setup so you can just debug your current file. Um, yeah, so I'll be sure to include those in the comments of this video. If you have any questions, please, please let me know and uh, happy debugging.